is coming. The tweet is coming. All I hear is Leander's jackhammering going on over there. Is it really bad? <laughs> is your window open? No, it's closed. What can we do about it? No, man? nothing. Don't worry about it. I'll just do you, do you I'll have a die. rifle. <laughs> if you put one right through the windshield of the truck, that might do it. You don't have to hurt anyone. Just... Christian might be different sounds that might arise. <laughs> just give him a warning <laughs> shot. For instance, a banging on your door. <laughs> and you go to answer it, and they bust in with one of those metal things. <laughs> Land you on your butt. Uh, oh, we already have some viewers here. The stream is live, Lewis. The stream is live. Let me hit this tweet. Here we go. How's this for a headline? Apple's VR headset will do far more than we've been told. How do you like that, Lewis? Is that true? Yeah. Absolutely. We'll talk about it. Is that true? You don't you don't have to repeat this. You can just say well, Coltcast is live. I mean, literally we it's gotta be true that it's more than we've been told because you haven't been told anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's, if it comes in a box, it'll do more than we've been told. That's why it's true. Because <laughs> we've been told nothing. No, we've been told a lot, Lewis. Uh, hold on a sec. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Char Chase McLean. McLean! Reese Grundy. Hey, y'all. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Thanks for joining us. It is true, Lewis. Let's see here. Let me hit this tweet out. Hey, guys, we're still just uh, we're getting ready to go live. Well, to do the show here. And let's bring in some uh, let's bring in some people. How about that? Let me just announce this to the ex very exclusive cult club. There we go. And we're ready to rock and roll. <clears throat> if you hear that jackhammering sound, it's just uh, the San Francisco turd. <laughs> Turd vacuum force outside of Leander's window, cleaning out a 15 foot pipe that gets backed up. That gets so backed up with turds, they have to come down there. What do you say, like once every two months, Leander, and suck that thing out? <laughs> once a year, they told once me. But yeah. How do you clog a 15 foot pipe <laughs> with Big turds? job. <laughs> yeah, they said they never used to have this problem. And uh, and then like a few years ago, all of a sudden it started getting backed up. And Lander was like, "That's funny. That's when we moved into this building." <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> it's routine maintenance. I like to let everyone know. Yeah. Nothing to do with that. What are you worried about? Yeah, is it normal to have to flush four times when you're done? Shout out to Zach Hicks is here. Hello, Governor. We got a lot of stuff to talk about here, guys. But while we're waiting for anyone to cram in, uh, Lander, do you have any fun stories that you can tell us while we're waiting here? What's going on in LK's world? Uh, you know, I don't know. At the moment, I'm been working hard. Yeah? Are you writing any new books, Lander? No, not right now. Mm. You're at six, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Oh, man, you got to get at least four more in before you before you croak. You think really gotta get the round ten? Yeah, get it up to ten. I got some ideas, but I think after the last one, um, the publishers aren't exactly beating down the door. <laughs> uh oh. You mean the Cultimac 2.0? Cultimac 2 was a bit of a bust, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh man. Well, that was like a redo of an of another book, so maybe that's well, why. Well, yeah, there was lots of problems with it, but it actually was a great book. I really think it's like one of the best books we've done. Uh huh. Um, it really is a beautiful looking book. It really. really Do you have one there that you could show us? Looking. Um, without covering yourself in a pile of books? Yeah, hold on, here it is. I want to see yeah, it. Yeah. I don't think they I've actually ever seen it in real... Oh, here we go. We're getting an exclusive look at the Cultimac 2.0 book. This is what this is what launched it all. Well, the 1.0. Here it is, yeah. Here's the book. It was oh, designed yeah. to look like a MacBook. You hold know, it up so... a little bit higher, Leander, and to your right. There you go. Perfect. Oh, yeah, so I like that logo. I'm... Yeah, it's designed to look like a MacBook. It looks you know, exactly how, uh, like a MacBook. And it's clever. Like, if you open it up, there it Whoa! is. Whoa! Dude, that is cool. So for those <laughs> listening, I don't know if I'll release this audio. When you open the, the cover of the book, the, the inside cover is black, and then the first page looks like a MacBook keyboard. And then there's a trackpad. That's actually really cool. Yeah. 
So it's supposed to be opened up like that, like a MacBook. That's a great logo. I'm going to mess it up. But I think, you know, like when we had the pictures on Amazon, yeah, um, it was hard to see. You know, they had this picture and it was like, is that a book? You know, it, it didn't look like a traditional book cover. Yeah. Um, like it looks and... so much like a MacBook, they thought it might be a MacBook. <laughs> it just looked like a great book. You got, got like a bunch of negative job. reviews. Thought I was buying a MacBook. Only I only got this book. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious no if that's what take yeah, it? Got book, but, no Mac. <laughs> but inside, as you can see, yeah, look at that. Expensive. That looks great. It's really beautifully laid out. Yeah, the designer did a, an amazing Whoa, job. Oh, every page has like a theme. It's did full you do color. A video of it? Dude, that must have been an absolutely mind-boggling amount of work. Tons of pictures. Who did yeah. all the arrangements of all the images and the text and everything? Did the you publisher's that? designer. Okay. Wow. Yeah, look, look at that. I mean, every single page is designed. I mean, it, and there's some really good stories in here. It's all about the Mac community, the Apple community. That's very cool. I mean, look, you know, the, on the photography, look at some of the photographs in here. Yeah, that looks these amazing. Are, these are iPhone photographs that people have taken. Oops. Holy moly. And, this is a great plug yeah, no, for the book, too. Oh, this portraits. Oh, those are those are portraits done with the iPhone? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Dave interviewed this. I mean, he's a, I think it's a time photographer, a professional photographer that uses um, the iPhone now for his portraits. Yeah, and then we got all these collectors, you know, like these people with their own little private Mac museums. Like, look at this guy. This is someone's basement. We've I talked about that, that guy before, didn't we? On the show, yeah, yeah, uh, it, it, you know, it's a really nice book, but it, it bombed. Man, <sighs> which is a bummer. I want a copy of it. It's, it's available Typical, on Amazon, you know, is it? Like the, the best book we've done is the worst selling one. Isn't that funny how that works? Like how sometimes yeah. the best thing that you do is the thing that's the least appreciated. Maybe when you, maybe when you die, it will become a cult classic. Oh, great! <laughs> you know, like, like, yeah. like a painter. <laughs> <laughs> what do you go? You'll never actually yeah, like, get to see anyone appreciate your life's work, but we'll all like it after you're gone. <laughs> well, that's great. I, I, I'll go to the grave, you know, gratified about that. <laughs> I'll send you a message from the Ouija board. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks. When did so that when you get come out last, when you, last fall, huh? Did that come out last fall. Fall. It was supposed to come out in the fall. It came out like three days before Christmas. Which is, might have been one of the reasons it bombed. I was just gonna let's, say that sounds like a bad time to release a book. Let's do a relaunch. You should, man. That looks like a great book. And I'm not How just saying that to plug it. I, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> pretend you never launched it in the first place. <laughs> just take well, it off Amazon. It. No one knows about it. Take it off. Yeah. And then start talking about how you're getting ready to release a book and then just turn it back, turn your listing back on. Maybe the listeners would like to buy one, you know. Do you have a Sharpie? You could just turn that little 2.0 into a 3. Oh. Uh. All right. Well, we should uh, we'll, we should plug it on the show. Let's. Uh, <laughs> Ian Fuchs is saying next book, Cult of Puff. There you go. That book will sell a ton. <laughs> God. <laughs> I've actually yeah. Anyway, let's not get into that. I, I do have some ideas about that, but there you go. You, you're you're definitely an expert now. You could write an entire series of books on oh yeah on the the Ganj community. Cult of Whacked. <laughs> okay um let's see here i think we're ready to go so welcome everyone we got a lot of stuff to talk about and pay no attention to the uh <laughs> the clutter behind me i'm sorry there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on in here that i can't i don't have time to talk about um but yeah i realize that it looks like i'm broadcasting live from oscar the grouch's garage and i'm working <laughs> on it okay Actually, right after we're done with the show, I'm going to be working on organizing all this and getting all rid of all this crud that you see that's behind me. All right, well, we've got uh, we got people here. Let's go ahead and get Mrs. D queued up here. Where is she? Hey, Mrs. D, are you ready? Oh, hello. Look, we're ready to go, and we need you. And I need you to give this one one with gusto because we got a lot of exciting stuff to talk about. Oh, I'd be delighted. Okay. Hey, I just got hit with an orange. What was that? Oh, a drive-by fruiting. <laughs> this is D, you're crazy. Hello? Drive-by fruiting. Drive-by fruiting? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, boy. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. We're going to lose half our listeners. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and get everything queued up, and we will get this show on the road. Here we go. No, that didn't work. Hold on. Here <laughs> we go. <laughs> Hello! Welcome to the Colcast, the best 30 plus minute Apple conversation you're going to hear all week long. I'm your host, Airfun Elijah. Joining me today after several scuffles with Cupertino personnel, he's now only allowed on Apple's campus with a watchful security escort. He's the founder of Coltimac. Leander Caney is here. Hello, everybody. Also with us, the state prosecutor calls his flogging of Coltimac writers a class to assault, but he likes to refer to it as tough love. And the productivity has never been higher. He's the managing editor of Cult of Mac. Lewis Wallace is here. Yeah, the, these will never hold up in court. Uh, you should charge. probably watch what you say, because I heard that the prosecutor is listening to these broadcasts. <laughs> <laughs> and your words could be used against your court of law. Scurrilous. Scurrilous claims. Well, look, you don't want to ease up on the discipline. You don't want this to become like 9 to 5 Mac or something. You know, <laughs> you got to keep things running high and tight, Lewis. And that's what we appreciate about you guys. Okay, welcome everyone. We've got a ton of stuff to talk about today, including some VR talk. Now, I know that my tweet was a little bit clickbaity, but honestly, I think it's 100% true. We did a episode of Cult Cast Off Topic with Alex E. Heath. Oh yeah, he's back. And Buster, the delicious Buster Heine, last week, talking more about his information scoop about the Apple... Everyone keeps calling them the Apple VR headset... It's not going to be just VR. I feel, I feel like it's a complete misnomer to call this Apple VR. They're going to call it something like the Apple Eyes or something like this, right? Because this headset is going to do far more than we've been told. It's not like just a, a VR gaming headset, which is what I kept thinking of it as. From what I've heard, this is more like the replacement for the iPhone in the future, potentially, is how this is being viewed by people in the industry. So... It has all sorts of ramifications. We'll we'll dive into all of it, and I'll give you some of the choice tidbits from my conversation with Alex. But if you want to hear the whole conversation, you can head on over to support.thecultcast.com. You get three episodes of Cultcast Off Topic every single week for just six bucks. Now, these conversations span a wide variety of issues. So we are talking about Apple. We talk tech. We've been talking a lot about investment stuff recently, so crypto. Doge, Bitcoin, Elon Musk, you name it. Anything that interests us, we have conversations about it. And so it's really fun because we have like these meandering conversations. Oftentimes, we don't even have any kind of agenda. We just show up. It's like the Joe Rogan experience, except not as good and not as long. (laughs) (laughs) But I was joking on the show. Is there a single person in America who's ever listened to an entire Joe Rogan experience podcast? I don't think so. They're like three hours long, you know? The Alex Jones one was five and a half hours long. Five and a half hours. Half hours. Can you imagine? Leander would be dead if I tried to talk to him for five and a half hours. Oh my God. <laughs> Can you imagine having a five and a half hour long conversation with How somebody? Many, did they take a bunch of breaks or what? I think they might have only taken one break. And it's just because they were all doing illicit activities during the show. And so they had to stop to get like brownies and go to the bathroom and stuff. But other than that, I think it was pretty much straight through as far as I recall. Wow. Yeah. All right. So we got that on the docket. Where the heck are my show notes here? There we go. All right. So we got we got the Apple. I'm calling it mixed reality from now on because that's really what it is. The mixed reality headset. Lewis is going to tell us why there should never be another iPhone mini ever again. This was a big story on Cult of Mac this week that lots of people read. So we'll be filling you in. Also, we've got some of the New features from iOS 14.5, the beta. There's some great stuff baked in here. We'll be talking about the new Apple Maps updates. We'll tell you how to make Spotify or another music uh, service your default music player in iOS 14.5. This is actually really cool. Long-awaited feature. And then perhaps one of my favorite one of my favorite stories of the week. Let me go into full browser mode here. Check out TC, Tim Cook. Look at him in, uh, in the wilderness here. He's an avid outdoorsman. I want to I want to touch on this hilarious uh, magazine cover that Tim Cook landed this week, and I'll tell you why it's funny. And then also there are some elements to this story that I found to be really interesting. Some comments that that Tim Cook made in the story that um, I think were kind of uh, 
Well, they, they alluded to things that Apple's going to be doing in the future. So why don't we just jump in? I know I didn't give you preparation for this, Lewis, but can you – and I would normally go to Leander, but he's going to toss this to you anyway, Lewis. Is yeah. there anything to plug in the Cult of Mac store, store.cultofmac.com? Anything that we could talk about? I'm headed oh, right now, store.cultofmac.com. Shouldn't take me more than fifteen seconds to pull up the web page and take a look. You know what? Uh, Let me do it. Uh, Let me do it. You, uh, you, you look for. Uh, I'm gonna pull it up in browser mode. Okay, you, you. Uh, it's almost loaded. Hey man, it's almost loaded. Uh, you uh, I can come see. up. Yeah, sorry. Can you hear oh, me? Oh, Valentine's Day savings. Yeah, all right. There you go. Valentine's Day savings. Yeah. All right. Now let me click that link and let's see how long that takes to load. This is this is great television, by the way. One, two. It's like that uh, old commercial for the uh, whatever those things were called. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lewis, do you want to talk uh, about this, or do you want me to talk about it? I, I'm. It's almost impossible for me to do it, man. Okay, let me just do it because I haven't plugged the Cult of Mac store in a long time, and I yeah. got lots of stuff to say. So you just kick back, let me talk about the Cult of Mac store. It used to be the Cult of Mac watch store, and then we watched it change into a store that had way more items than just that. Oh my God, do I have a? Where is it? No, that's not it. No, that's not it. There we go. I'm giving myself one of those. So, if you need a a Mac accessory, a watch accessory, a new charger for your iPhone, this is one of the most unique stores on the internet. You can head on over to store.cultomac.com, and it's curated. So, it's not a bunch of cheap garbage. It's actual high-quality stuff offered to you for great prices, stuff that you'll love to use, Stuff that will complement the Apple gear that you already have, cases, watch straps, and you'll find really high quality products here that you'll absolutely love. There's a Valentine's Day sale going on right now. I'm browsing it right now. You can see there's like 15% off some of this stuff, 72% off some of this stuff. A lot of this stuff is sold out. So if you're interested, head on over to store.cultomac.com. So you're way too late. <laughs> uh, so don't even bother going. It's already all gone. You've missed it. <laughs> Just forget it. It's all sold out. <laughs> No, there is a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff left. But I'm trying to create some urgency here, guys. It's a mental trick. <laughs> a lot of stuff sold out, so you better act fast. Act fast. Store.coldthemac.com. It's all going. Everything must go. We need to film a bit of Lander breaking a TV, like an old timey TV with a sledgehammer or something. <laughs> something to get people's juices flowing. I love these Riley and Low Apple Watch bands. Actually, I really want one of these. I really want to get one of these. Oh, I know it's where only, you can get one. It's only thirty four bucks too. That's really not bad. So those are like the elastic let me straps, make a light right? Purchase now. You know, talk us through it. Yeah, let me just put my credit card here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Six. Just read it aloud zero we'll two. Get it down. Anyway, store.coltomac.com is your is your source for lots of great lots of great Apple uh, accessories for great prices. Do you guys like my cursor here? Anyone notice that? <laughs> All right. Here we go. You know. Yeah. You know what, what else we got? Uh, we do have 15% off on Mujo's uh, iPhone cases. They make really excellent leather iPhone cases. And uh, also their touchscreen gloves, how which you, I've used. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't get out much, especially these days. How do you and I don't Mujo? usually go anywhere where it's cold. But oh. if you live somewhere where there's cold weather and you want to use your phone outside without your fingers freezing off, those things are great. How do you spell Mujo? M U J J. Oh, okay. That's why it didn't work. I did one J and it it They're, rejected me. They make great stuff. I've used their iPhone cases over the years. They're the leather ones. They really they they look good. They feel good. They hold up. They have some where you can stick a credit card in the back. They're uh, they're just great stuff. Oh man, I like the look of these touchscreen gloves. A good pair of touchscreen gloves can can really improve your life. I I wear these while I'm biking. Uh, and so I can interact with my phone, but still have my gloves on, you know, because it's cold outside. Yeah, yeah. But most gloves are really bulky. And so it makes it hard to actually interact with your screen. You have to, like, touch it just right. And there's, like, a giant fat piece of, like, fabric on the end of your finger. And it makes it kind of hard to use. Sounds These like looks... it's improperly fitted. Well, they fit like they're – they fit like a glove. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have a bunch of uh, bunch of sizes, and you can print out a little uh, sizing thing. Just oh, that's like, handy. Kind of like you do with the Apple Watch, you know, and you uh, – Get it so you get it. Um, you know, my hands are extraordinarily large. I was able to find <laughs> extremely <laughs> yeah. large. Massive. No, they uh, they they're good. I mean, I tr I tried them uh, in Italy a couple of years ago. Around uh, you know, it's like thirty five degrees. I was running around. I was freezing. My hands were a lot less cold. <laughs> yeah. 
and I was able to use my phone, which was awesome. I once saw Lewis drinking out of a cup, and his hands fit perfectly around it, and then I found out it was a thimble, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> his hands are small. Okay, let's jump right into it. Lewis, why don't you tell us why there should never be another iPhone mini ever again? They should retire it and never bring it back. Very controversial story, if you ask me. Yeah, it is kind of a controversial. It's an opinion piece. Uh, and uh, our writer, Ed Hardy, came up with this idea. And, he, and uh, I'll just read a, a little bit of what he wrote. Uh, iPhone 12 mini is the worst selling of new iOS handsets by a wide margin. Apple should be embarrassed because there's plenty of evidence before the launch. Just sales would be poor. Take note, another super small iPhone will just compound the mistake. No more 5.4-inch iPhones ever. Very, very negative opinion of the yeah. iPhone 12 Hey, Leander, what, what, what did you think about uh well, What's what Ed think about got against opinion? the iPhone mini? Well, his point is that, you know, they, they only sold about 5% of the uh, – or iPhone 12 mini only – consisted ah, gee whiz only racked up about five percent of the sales of all the the whole lineup right so why should apple waste his time if really only five percent of people want one they're not going to do it again and i mean it, it, i actually thought that that thing was going to be a huge me success too because i've heard for years from people who loved they were clinging desperately to their iphone se right because they loved the small phone they wanted a small iphone and you know, uh, when I heard that they were doing the mini and that it was, you know, you know, the latest processor, kind of just basically feature parity. I mean, slightly smaller battery, slightly slower charging, but everything else, you know, top notch. I was like, wow, this thing is going to be a gigantic hit. I thought it was one of the most exciting ones of the lineup. And uh, it just it turned out to be, a, you know, a, a quote unquote failure. I mean, you know, for Apple, if you sell, you know. 60 million iPhones and only 5% of them. I mean, you know, it's still a lot of units, but I don't know. You tell me, Leander. I mean, can Apple, do they like to keep something in their uh, lineup that is, you know, that, you know, quote unquote unsuccessful? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, you know, I, I've been using one um, for the last few weeks. I traded it from the Max Pro down to the Mini, and I really like it. I, I think it's a fantastic phone. I, I'm, I'm totally surprised that. Uh, you know, it hasn't been um, a bigger hit. And like you said, I think, you know, everyone was expecting this to sell like hotcakes. I thought people wanted small phones. You know, there was so much clamoring. I still remember yeah. reading all these opinion pieces. You know, they wanted it. Uh, Apple's going in the wrong direction. So I'm surprised that it's a bust. And, and like you said, there's nothing about the phone itself that would make it a bust. It's not, um, it's not you know, it hasn't been crippled in any way, really. Um, except for the size, I mean that's the only thing. It's it's got it it, it you know feature parity with the other phones. It's it's just as good. But uh, yeah, I'm surprised. I don't know why it hasn't been more popular. It's it's a it's a it really is a mystery. Well, we should add that, and this is a comment from Tim Baker in the comments. He says Apple never discloses sales, and Tim Cook has said these reports from suppliers on orders are not at all representat representative of sales. So this this report comes from CounterPoint Research, which is some kind of firm that guesstimates how many phones have sold. <laughs> I would be surprised if it wasn't somewhat accurate. Like, maybe maybe it's off by 2 or 3%. I don't think it's probably wholly inaccurate. Like, maybe the iPhone mini accounted for 20% of sales or something like that. I doubt it's that far off. So... I think the idea is that it gives you a sense of how many phones have sold in the lineup and what what percentage of the lineup is accounted for for each type of phone. I would hate to see them retire the Mini, but the Mini is one of those things that everyone says they want, but when it comes to actually spending their money, they don't actually buy it. You know what I mean? Like, I've talked about buying the Mini, but when it comes right down to it, I just don't really want a phone that's that small. You know what I mean? I would rather have something with a 5.4 inch screen or a 6.1 inch screen. And the mini is a little too mini for me. And the other thing is battery <laughs> life. So I say that I want the small size, but what, by, from a practicality standpoint, I end up not really actually wanting it. And then you hold the max. So for the first time in my life, this is actually a low point for me. My mom <laughs> has a newer phone than me. My, my brother bought her an iPhone 12 Pro Max. And I was like, dude... Whoa. This is way too much phone for my mom. <laughs> she's she's never had a cell phone before, ever. What? No cell phone? She's Very never had a cell phone. phone. Ever? She she's uses back. her iPad, so maybe in a way this is a smaller iPad. Yeah, it's well, yeah, at this point. 
<laughs> so maybe in a way, it's not that far fetched to think that her having a phone is going to be something that, or or more equipment than she actually needs. But I walked over, or I went to her house, and she had an iPhone 12 Max, 12 Pro Max sitting there, and I picked it up, and I was like, "This is a beautiful phone, man! Like that big display is so beautiful. It's like charming." When you have something it? like that in your hand. So I stole it. Yeah. She's been wondering where it went. <laughs> she doesn't watch this show. So she'll find my iPhone. <laughs> she, uh, she doesn't know how to use find my iPhone. She doesn't know how to use a podcast. So I have no, I have no <laughs> word. No like, idea where it's going. Yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. But it was a little weird to, for me to see her with a phone that's newer than mine. I, I'm still recovering from that. Embarrassed. Yeah, I was a, a little. Podcaster, are you? I really actually was genuinely a little bit embarrassed. I'm like, I do an Apple podcast and my elderly mother has a newer better phone than me she actually asked me if i wanted it she's like here just take it i was like i'm not gonna take your phone oh really i mean i did (laughs) but (laughs) i'm gonna go put on a wig and go over there (laughs) it's me your phone your son (laughs) i I gotta say man the 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 pro max is beautiful and but i I actually think it's starting to hurt my hand i mean i hold it so often and it's it's like it's so it's just slightly too big for me being a Tiny little hand guy. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're a tiny hand guy like you. Doesn't it doesn't well, it eventually it... make your hand get tired, you know, just holding it up like it's, that? I think it's because the sides are so right. abrupt, you know? They're yeah. they're so uh it's like holding a gun all day. You know? And it's like it's kind, <laughs> it's kind of, of an digs odd into example. Me, you know, a gun. Well that's that's what I think that that's what I every time I pick one of these up, that's what I am reminded of. It's like a gun. They're heavy, they're made of metal, they they remind me of a pistol. Yeah. Mm, or a yeah, power right. tool, you know? They're, they're just they're, like a gun. Yeah. And sometimes they're, they're Lewis machined. just holds one in his hand all day long and just carries it around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, itch, he itches himself with it, you know? <laughs> you shot that shooting raccoons in the backyard, feral hogs. <laughs> yeah, those those San Francisco feral hogs are notorious. Pulling we'll up your garden. Tell me this. Have you used the uh, LiDAR sensor on, on your phone? Oh, wait, you don't have one, Leander. Oh, neither do you. Then. I don't actually. Oh. I don't use it. Wait, Leander has one. Leander, you have the iPhone 12 mini, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah no, I haven't used the LiDAR. It doesn't have the LiDAR. Does I it? mean, no. I, I, I've got it on the Max, and I haven't used it, no, to be honest. I, I tried to use it, and uh, I can't remember what happened. It wasn't that impressive. I tried to do some <laughs> scan, and I was in a hurry, so I didn't have a time to really <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> I tried to do some measuring. You know the measuring thing? It looks so cool. You know the, 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 um, the measuring app? Yeah, and and it looks so cool, but it's actually kind of it's tricky to work, huh? And I'm not, and I'm never ever confident that it's accurate. So then you you measure it with the phone, and then you bust out the tape measure, and you're like, oh, why did I even bother with the phone? You know, I should just gone straight to the tape measure. Yeah, it's not reliable. Yeah, although actually it did turn out to be accurate. Funny enough, you know, the measurements were did turn out to be accurate. Well, and every once time, in a while I'll get it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, exactly. That's I wouldn't thing. use it to build yeah, a know, house. <laughs> Yeah, you don't know when it's going to be. I did see a really cool app. I don't remember the name of it, unfortunately, that would allow you to take 3D scans using LiDAR of anything, and then it would create like a 3D model of that thing that you could like spin around. That was actually really cool. That was the first application that I've seen that I think I would actually use. Of course, for me, that's a novelty. What would I do with that after I've taken the scan besides be like, oh, that's cool. I shouldn't read this comment, but... um, Oh no! Andy Croft says about your comments about the about the iPhone 12 Pro Max says not used to holding something so girthy, Lewis. <laughs> That's true. I'm sorry. I would I, I disavow that it's comment. Quite large. Yeah, it is. But once you get that screen in your hand, oh boy, and the battery life is 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 so good too. Okay, I wasn't meaning to talk about this story for so long. Let's um, <laughs> I I hope that they keep making the mini. I'll just say that. I, do, I think it's actually a really fine little phone, you know. It's a really and it's so beautifully made. Um, and the funny thing is, the, the screen's not that small, you know. I still have to use um, re, uh, what's it called? Reach around hand job. Oh, 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 ways. Oh. What's now. the one sh- called sh- where sh- you sh- swipe the screen down? Hand off. Oh, uh, no. Reachability. No, uh, reachability. Yeah. Reach around. I still have to use reachability <laughs> with my tiny little hands. Isn't it? I, I disavow. I disavow. I'm doing a lot of that this show. <laughs> Um, just demonetization <laughs> express. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we've we've gone off the track and now we're rolling down the cliff sideways. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's move on and just never speak of that again. Let's talk about. <laughs> let's talk about 
some Apple AR VR glasses news. Now, look, I know that a lot of people don't find this story to be interesting. And, and to be honest, I was kind of right there with you. But this new information that we got from Alexi Heath, this was actually a great report. I, I hate to give him this much credit. And I don't like getting out scooped by Alexi Heath. It re- actually is really agitating to me. And I told him that. But this was a good story and a good scoop. And, and we talked about this last week. And this is about the $3,000 apple vr headphones or the apple vr headset and i was like three thousand dollars boy they are you out of your mind like is that actually going to turn out to be accurate and he said yeah i think everything in this story is is accurate he said he tries to be really careful about how or what things he reports and what he says and i was like "Uh uh-huh sure alex but so i'm looking i'm showing you guys some renders right now that a uh a designer, his name's Antonio De Rosa, put out. So these renders were put out based on this sketch that was included in the information story. So this was Alex E. Heath's story. So because he wanted to protect his source, they weren't allowed to actually show. He said he's actually seen pictures of the device, but he can't show them because he wants to protect his source. So they created this sketch based upon what he saw. And then this designer, Antonio De Rosa, created this i mean this looks beautiful this this actual render and i know most of the time renders this, turn out to not really be that accurate sorry leander go ahead what was that yeah i was gonna say i mean the one problem with that render if you look at the headband yeah the way that it's um set up the headband's gonna go right over your ears so there's something a bit screwy there oh that's actually a really good point but it might go it might bypass your ears i mean i don't know if you had it above your ears like if you're wearing um like glasses or something, something that goes over your ears, right? I don't know. So maybe this won't end up being 100% accurate, but this, according to App or according to Alex, is the prototype that they're working with. And what I thought was really interesting is my original thought about this was this is going to be some kind of VR experience, right? You're going to use this to play video games. Now, that is an aspect of it, but this goes far beyond that, okay? So Facebook... And Apple, they're both working on headsets like this, according to Alex. And they're thinking about this as the the next generation of iPhone. This is going to be the computer that you interact with the most. And what is interesting about the Apple mixed reality headset, and that's what I'm calling it from now on, because it's not AR, VR, it's mixed reality. So like the idea is that the eight, there's going to be two 8K displays inside of the of this headset, right? And you'll be able to dial in and out of VR and AR. So the screens will have a visibility mode or a transparency mode, I should say. So like your AirPods or your AirPods Max or your AirPods Pro, your AirPods Max, right? So you can activate a mode that artificially pipes in the audio. You'll be able to artificially pipe in actual reality inside the goggles. So it will show you what the goggles are actually seeing. And then it will overlay VR, AR elements on top of the real world. So you don't need to take these things off. You could just walk away, walk around wearing these <laughs> if you wanted to. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. I just can't wait. I mean, maybe you're at Burning Man. <laughs> I mean, think about think about the movie Wall-E, where the everyone had like those visual displays that they were always staring into. That's kind of the idea here. And he even said that there might be like the Apple Watch crown that will be attached to these, so you could like twirl the crown and dial in and out of AR and VR. So some wild stuff. And just think of all the different applications that you could have available to you, all the computing applications. Imagine if you're at your desk working, you wouldn't even need a Mac. In fact, he said that the chip that they are using in this was designed specifically for this headset, and they are going to be repurposing it for the uh, uh, future generation Mac Pro. That's how powerful these are supposed to be. So this is a standalone unit, not supposed to be attached or not doesn't need to be connected to your iPhone for computing power. It's going to be running all on its own power and doing all of its own computing. And you will have the real world if you want it. And then you'll be able to dial in VR or AR elements. You can use it for gaming. You can use it for productivity. You can use it for movies. Two 8K displays, so very hyper-realistic. And if you've ever used a mirrorless camera, they already have this technology inside of a mirrorless camera. Where's my camera? I don't have it here. But when you look into the viewfinder on like a Fuji, like a Fuji X-T4 or something, when you're looking through there, it's actually showing you an OLED display, and then it's overlaying 
different visual elements on top of the image that it's showing you. So it's basically bringing that technology into a headset. So you're, sh you're being shown what is in front of the goggles, but then it's overlaying UI elements. And here's another interesting part of it. Let me go back into browser mode. So I'm showing the, um, I'm showing the, uh, the render again, and you'll see on the front, there is actually a display on the front of the headset too. And we had a discussion all about that. What is that going to do? Well, you'll have to listen to find out. I can't go into everything here. What what is there's it a that? display on the front of the headset. Does it show your eyes? Uh, well, that is one possibility. <laughs> that is one possibility that we that we discussed. Actually, I don't remember all the stuff we talked about. We talked for like an hour about these dang mixed reality headsets. But you can see right here, there is a display on the front according to what was reported. So what is that display going to be used for? Well, there are certainly some theories. And one of the theories was that it will show your eyes. And uh, here's the inside. This is just a render again, so not the actual product, but here's what it could look like on the inside. So hearing that, hearing all that, I got very excited. And I went from, uh, I don't really see the application for these, to, whoa, this is not at all what I was thinking. This is not a gaming VR headset, although I think it will have some, it will have some functionality in that realm. This is a whole next generation computing device. And let me see here. Here we go. Here's the story I was trying to get to. I meandered my way all the way here. Top Apple engineer now heads AR VR glasses development. Dan Riccio, one of Apple's top designers, is now concentrating all his efforts on the company's virtual reality visor and augmented reality glasses. Previously, he headed Apple's hardware engineering team. Then Cupertino revealed in January that Riccio, am I saying that right? Riccio? Riccio? I, as far as I know. Leander? Riccio? Riccio? I, psh, I don't know. Okay. Riccio was transitioning to a new role, but it wouldn't say what the role would be. On Monday, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, a.k.a. the Germinator, apparently solved the mystery. Ricky, Riccio is focusing on the company's upcoming virtual reality and augmented reality devices. Let's see here. I thought there was a quote in here from... Oh, here it is. <laughs> the very next paragraph. It's apparently something <laughs> Riccio is thrilled about. In January, he said he is focusing... Quote, focusing all my time and energy at Apple on creating something new and wonderful, and I couldn't be more excited about it. He didn't specify what it will be, leaving it up to this leak to answer the question. So, there you go. I think this is what he's working on. And, I, I mean, when you think about the price tag, $3,000, that's the, that's the maiden price tag, right? I think most people are going to scoff that price. I was. But hearing the vision for it, it makes me think, oh, this is not... An accessory for your iPhone. This is a whole new computing paradigm that Apple is trying to build. And if you can dial in and out of reality, I mean, just think about the ramifications of that. You're walking around. It can show you directions in real time. You go somewhere. It shows you someone's face and pulls up all their information. You're not going to be wearing that thing in public. There's just no way. There's no <laughs> I don't way. know. I don't know. No I mean, way. Unless you, I mean, like Google Glass. You remember how Google uh, Glass holes, you know, and people's reaction to that? And then is that now you've got an even bulkier one, like it's a complete VR headset, and they're thinking people's <laughs> going to be wandering around in that, like going, "Oh wow, look how amazing this is! I can see reality <laughs> through these twelve cameras on my headset. My God! I mean, if I just flip it up, I can see the same thing. But you know, I've got the headset on, and instead it's piping it in through the, you know, screen. I got this amazing. I just hey, there's no way. Hey, you there's know no what, way. Leander? What was it like in nineteen in the nineteen hundreds? <clears throat> Henry Ford said, "If you'd ask person what a person what kind of car they wanted, they'd, they'd say they just want a faster horse." I think that's well, where we're at with this. I think I, that you wouldn't want a faster horse. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it does seem strange now, but yeah. when they release it and they show you all that it will do, and if the price tag actually comes down to something affordable, three thousand dollars is a lot for most people. Really, to buy something like this <laughs> now now. Are you going to wear this yeah, on the I bus and walking around? Yeah, I'm going to look like a complete tool. What are you, what are you talking about? You're going to look, you're going to look super I mean, futuristic. Anyway, but no, I, 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 I just don't see this at all. It, at all. It's a couch headset, man. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going outside with that thing. <laughs> Here's my... I mean, yeah, go ahead. I mean, you might wear it on an airplane or something, or it might be you know, at, at, at the home, but I don't think that's leaving the house, like Lewis says, all the workplace. Well, eventually, I think 
I think eventually it will, especially once you're sitting in your Apple car and it's driving you somewhere <laughs> and you don't have to do anything. Dude, that's the yeah. future. Here's the future I want to live in right here. That's that's what I want right here. I'm showing Jody LaForge, Jody LaForge's <laughs> visor. That's the future that I want to live in right there. And we're getting closer every day. But just imagine. So Apple needs Apple is working on some big things. We know that. And Apple really needs something big to move them to the next level. I think this might be it, especially if if you have this and Apple does get into transportation, which we've heard they will. And I'm super excited about the prospect of a totally autonomous Apple car. That's something that we talked about last week. Just imagine how cool it would be to summon your Apple car. It comes and picks you up and you're like hanging out in an Uber or something. You're not doing anything as far as driving is concerned. You can look out the window. You can you know, be on your iPad. You can maybe have a sip of the old uh, Heineken or something. And your car just takes you wherever you want to go and drops you off. You're wearing your, your Apple eyes over your face, two 8K displays. It's showing you mixed reality. You can, you can watch what's going on in reality, but also have like a movie playing at the same time. It's pretty cool, man. <laughs> it's very okay. futuristic. So I can see why people would laugh and scoff at it. But once you hear the vision, I'm like, this actually sounds like a pretty cool device. Your and Apple Leander, Watch can uh, measure your tension level, and when you start to get a little bit too scared because you're hurtling down a highway <laughs> with a you know completely blinded with these blinders on, it'll it, some little injection will you know dope you up so you just like relax into it. <laughs> I mean, I, I just that's a compelling vision of the future. <laughs> well, Apple is working your on pod stuff. Shut up and go. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Seriously, it is kind of strangely um, similar to the future of Wally, isn't it? So, but you can have some Apple Maps broadcasting in there as you drive. I mean, there's all sorts of possibilities. And actually, actually, there's some great new features coming to Apple Maps. Am I right, Leander? That's right. Yeah. Apple Maps, finally, is going to let drivers uh, report accident speeds, traps, and other hazards. So Apple Maps will start collecting crowdsourced accident reports when iOS 14.5 is released. The beta version uh, already lets users test sharing the locations of accidents, speed traps, and other hazards. Um, this is not very cutting edge. Of course, you know, Google Waze has had this feature for years. The idea is that the iPhone users are everywhere, and if one of them reports seeing an accident while driving, other Apple Map users can be warned um, and possibly route around the problem. And it doesn't stop there. Apple Maps in iOS 14.5 beta allows motorists to learn others about more than just crashes. The upcoming version of the navigation software also lets them report speed traps as well as unspecified hazards like roadkill, um, drunks, uh, you know, people with goggles on, potholes, yeah, rats right. of unusual size. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's alerting drivers about speed cameras and red light cameras, a feature that was scheduled to debut in iOS 14 in 2020. Um, these crowdsource reports should add considerably to the available data. Do so, you yeah, know what? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, well, as, as I say, I've, I've used this in, in ways. In fact, I almost created an accident trying to report an accident in ways <laughs> as I was hurtling down the, the road. Um, yeah, and it's totally useful. I mean, ways it's amazing. It's it. Uh, you know, we we, I, we did a road trip a couple of years ago around the south, and um, you know, I mean, we, we went over the speed limit a couple of times. But I had ways up, and and it does a really really good job of reporting coppers and um, speed traps. I mean, uncannily accurate, you know, and, and, and super responsive because we've got so many people who are using it. I mean, the crowdsourcing data was amazing. So, you know, there'd be a report. It's like, watch out, there's a cop overhead. And so I'd slow, you know, hit the brakes real hard and then just glide by at the speed limit, sm you know, smirking and it looking totally smug. Works. I've had that same experience, man. Came around, a, I was in Italy and I saw like, uh, oh, a speed trap ahead. What? Huh? Okay. And uh, sure enough, you know, like half mile down the road. <laughs> cops with their little speed gun staring at you know it's like god they, they it's probably got some kind of lamborghini too to chase you down right <laughs> yeah well <laughs> it wouldn't take much to uh, catch me in that little rental car <laughs> what was it a fiat or something? <laughs> yeah probably a little four banger but uh yeah you know uh, this is a great thing i mean i the one thing that i hope that apple does better than ways is make that interaction simpler because i i know what you're talking about i use weighs a lot too and it is a little bit hard to uh report things yeah it's not easy at all is it and it looked like from the screenshots that the apple had made it really easy it, it was like there was three giant buttons there you know accident something coppers or something else you know and hazard it, and it looked like check. it was a lot easier yeah i got the uh i got the image up right now i welcome any new features to apple maps they really have made it a lot better 
I oh, love man, the know, uh, the look around feature. I think is hands down the best. It's so much better than than Google Street View. I mean, it it looks like hyper real, doesn't it? Imagine those yeah. in your Apple mixed reality goggles. It'll, it'll be like you're there. <laughs> you know what's really good too is the Siri directions as well. It's a lot better. It's actually really really good now, and um, it's good the way it tells you um, what to do, because you know, like normally it would say, oh, you know, take a left on uh, Elm Street. Uh, you know, uh, 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 it'll say like, you know, take a left on Elm Street or something like that. So then you got to look for Elm Street. You got to look for the signs. Now Apple Map says, you know, take a left at the next stop sign or take a left at the next traffic light. Or, or after the next traffic light, yeah, stay in the left lane to make or stay in. The, what I really like is when it's like stay in the second from the left lane to make a right turn. Or, you know, stuff like that. Like they set you up for the next move. It, it's yeah. definitely they they have definitely gotten it a lot better. If you haven't used it in a while, you know, you should definitely check it out. Right, it's way way better. That's funny because I was using Apple Maps the other day and I was cursing the sky because it was telling me to stay really? in one of the left lanes, and I was on the freeway and the highway was diverging. Right. And once I went into the left lane, what I realized is I actually needed to be in the right lane. It was t- it told me to be in the wrong lane, so I had to go like a mile down the road oh, and really? turn around. I feel like that kind of thing happens all the time. Mm-hmm. That's huh. that's Apple Maps' one big weakness. Still, even now, it's it's definitely a lot better. It's not trying to kill you anymore, <laughs> but it will oftentimes <laughs> take you on the. Or it, I guess the part that I don't like is the illustrations that it shows you on which lane to stay in. I feel like oftentimes, at least in my area, are unclear. So it will show you three lanes, and it's like, stay in this lane, but there's actually four lanes on the road. It doesn't seem to know that, and so you're not really sure like what lane you need to be in. So it you guys aren't seeing that, huh? reality, the... What's that? Go on, Lewis. Well, I was just going to say, uh, I, I've had kind of the opposite experience, you know. Uh, last time I was driving down toward the South Bay, I, I remember going, geez, you know, I got this really... Sp- you know, specific thing, like stay in this lane. And I, and I did. And sure enough, there's this construction that, you know, I don't know how long this construction been going on, but it, it, it's construction. It's not like it's been there forever. Right. And, uh, it, it definitely told me the right way to get through this kind of messy in progress construction. So, I mean, I've had, I've had, I think it's, I don't think I've ever got a bum steer from it lately. Uh, it, it's been really good. It, it's sometimes it's like, almost a little bit hard to process how much information is coming in, you know, like stay in the second from the left lane and after the third thing, turn right and blah, blah, you know, but uh, I think it's pretty good. I I have not been, you know, I I bet you though that that really depends on where you live. Well, we're in San Francisco, you know, like we're in the, I was just going to say, yeah, that's the one area where they probably have it perfect because all the people who work at Apple actually work or actually live there. So if there's a problem, they actually fix it. Yeah, probably true. Yeah, it's not it's not nearly as good in Seattle and the surrounding areas, but it is a lot better. And like I said, the look around is absolutely beautiful. You pull that up, it's fast, the animations are slick. The image quality is so much better than than Google Street View. It's like not even close anymore. And plus, you get your privacy. That's the thing with Google, they're tracking absolutely everything. So, I kind of like that all my information just stays private. Let's uh, let's rattle off some comments here from the chat. We're gonna start doing this more often, just so because you guys are chatting here. So we got some some comments here that we're tracking. Let me just rattle off a couple of these. Siddharth Gupta says, "Please give a shout out to my friend and Shul. His iPhone 11 got stolen. Oh bummer. Wait, got stolen? You just find my iPhone, dude. If you listen to this show, you would have found it by now. Give me a break." Uh, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, let's berate people for getting their phones stolen. Yeah. How about that? That's what we should just start doing is we have people comment and then we'll just make fun of them the whole time. Uh, let's see here. Hugh Rollins. I think his name's Hugh. H U W. Have you ever seen Hugh spelled that way? Yeah, is that's that... a kind of Welsh spelling. Oh, really? Okay. So Hugh, du- Hugh, Hugh Rollins. Uh, he was talking about the Apple mixed reality headset. He said, will be good for med- medical use, overlaying information while uh, competing an operation or, or an appointment. Yeah, that's definitely true. I mean, you could see with all of the heads up display information that could be available to you. You could see medical use for it. And we'll talk about medical stuff here in a little bit because Tim Cook actually commented on this recently. And, well, all sorts of stuff. I mean, you could use it to, like, analyze your golf swing. I mean, there's just – there's so many different ways that you could implement this technology in your life. Just think about what developers could do with a mixed reality headset like this. It's actually pretty cool. Zach Hicks says, you can use Siri to report any of that stuff too. Oh, really? Well – I've never tried that. Me either. You know, the thing about Siri, too, is... How, how do you do that? I'm going to guess you could say, hey, you know who, report an accident. 
when you're driving? I'm going to guess. Hey, you know who mm. reports, uh, I don't know, something else, hazard. But the thing and it is. Says your location data? Uh, I don't know. We're going to have to try it. Try it out. Huh, try it out. Okay. Try it out next time you're driving. Report back. The thing yeah. about um, talking to Siri, though, and this is one of those things that maybe only happens to guys like us who own multiple Apple devices. How many times has have you been trying to talk to you know who and all of your devices like turn on and start listening and then the wrong one responds? <laughs> that happens to me all the time and it makes me so mad. In fact, I'm going to be doing a live <clears throat> demo here of a of a feature in iOS 11.5 and I almost unplugged my HomePod minis because I was like, I know they're going to start listening. They're going to start listening, and then I'm going to have to like wrestle with which one of my devices is actually giving me the information that I want. Okay, so Zach Hicks reported back, hey, you know who, report accident here. Hey, you know who, report hazard here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and assume that this only works in iOS 11.5. I yeah, it must this is be the because... fourteen. I think it's the fourteen point five beta is what is yeah. where this capability is. You yeah. Know, so, and we should highlight this is a beta, so you may not have access to this unless you're in the beta program. But that is useful to be able to do it while you're driving, so that you don't have to like type it in and crash your car, and then and then say, <laughs> "Hey, you know who? Report accident here." Where is the accident? Here, my car's on fire. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see here. Where are we? I completely lost my lost track in the... Uh, okay, so we talked about Apple Maps. Let's talk about how to set Spotify or another music service as your default player. So this, you know, this is one of those features that I talk about with my friends and they just kind of scoff and they're like, <laughs> Android's had that for like five years. And fair enough. There are features that Apple is adding that definitely are catch-up, but I'm still appreciative that they're adding them because... You haven't been able to do this on your iPhone. Well, currently, you can't do it if you don't have the beta. Without saying, hey, you know who, play blank song from Spotify. That would be the only way that it works. And you couldn't set a music app as your default app, which is frustrating because you don't want to have to keep saying extra words in order to use the music uh, service of your choice. And I hope they add this to to the HomePods as well because this is seriously missing from the HomePods. In fact, you can't even specify what service to play music on from the HomePods. You have to either airplay it or you have to play it from, from Apple Music, which is frustrating. So let me see if I can get this to work. Uh, let me go ahead and let me see here. Okay, so yeah. So I have a subscription to Apple Music right now and I also have Spotify. Spotify is my main service of choice, but I'm using Apple Music for a variety of reasons. So let's test this out. So let's say... So let me pull this up here so I can show it to you guys. I'll try to bring it up like this. And we'll see if my if my HomePod minis respond. They probably are going to. Hey Siri, play Gillette from Apple Music. Gillette. Freaking No, hold on. Hold on a sec, guys. Leander, vamp for a sec. I'm gonna have to unplug these gall darn Oh my gosh, what do we have here? What? What? You had to unplug? Dude, I can't get my iPhone to do this without unplugging my HomePod minis. Because every just, they time just I take over, because they, they just take over. This is my point. Yeah, it's like I'm holding up my iPhone, talking to it. So, so supposedly, if you like lift it quickly and talk quickly, supposedly it knows. Okay, like, you want to try? You want? Yeah, yeah. Give you want to try? Try? Okay. try? Here we go. Here we go. Go back to me view. Hey Siri, play Gillette from Spotify. Whoa. Not playing. It worked. <laughs> the best okay. a man can get? This is this feature is the best a man can get. Okay, so now let's try this. So now that it's playing from Spotify, what happened there is now the iPhone will use Spotify as the default service going forward. So that is how you set it. You can't go into the settings and do it from the settings. You have to just speak it, and then it will set the music service that you specified and then use that service going forward. So, low, so let me try and do this again. Let me pick it up. I'm going to do the, uh, the Lewis <laughs> trick. Hey, Siri, play. Give him the love. No, that didn't work, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> let me try again. Hey, Siri, play. Give him the love. No, that didn't work. It's definitely hard to beat the HomePods, man. They got really good ears. I know, and they always want to take over. So rude. So let me helpful. try again. 
so brutal. Hey Siri, play Give Him the Love. This, these god darn things. Hold on, I'm going to you, Lewis. Vamp for a sec. Uh, I'm going I'm to unplug these. It's the only way this is going to work. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I can't believe he has to take those things offline just to get it to work. Hmm. That was some high-quality vamping. I'm back already. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Ready? This is great radio and great video. This is going straight to the trending <laughs> page on YouTube. Okay, let me try this again. Ready? Here we go. Hey, Siri, play Give Him the Love. Hey, it worked. It worked. It worked. Okay, now let's try with Apple Music. Let's try to switch it back to Apple Music. So, so if you don't specify, the very first time you do this, if you don't specify, it will actually pop up a list of music services that you have installed on your phone, and it will ask you which one you want to use. And then you tell it, and then from that point forward, it will use that music service. Now, it doesn't work perfectly. Sometimes it will still ask you which music service you want to use, even though you have the default set. So just keep that in mind. But let's try this. Hey Siri, play Gillette from Apple Music. Yeah, huh? Crazy. Oh, that's not the right song though. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now let's try this again. Hey Siri, play Give Him the Love. Ed Sheeran. Now that oh, don't that's when it goes demonetized. So it used the right music service. <laughs> But it did not play the right, right song. song. <laughs> yeah. But it played the right songs on Spotify. <laughs> hey, Siri, take me to my house. <laughs> oh, sorry, driving you to somewhere else. <laughs> okay, taking you to my blouse. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, hold on. Uh, hey, Siri, play Give Them the Love from Spotify. Ed Sheeran again. No, no. Here we go. No, now it's the right song. So it plays the right song from Spotify. That's interesting. Uh, Maybe it's not, not on Apple Music. No, it is, because I've played it from Apple Music. Okay, hold on. Let's uh, try it again. Hey, Siri, uh, play Give Them the Love from Apple Music. What? Did you hear that? Now it's playing say? a completely different song from Apple Music, not even the one that played before. <laughs> yeah, I've I've had these kind of screwy things happen with uh, requests for uh, Apple TV and also Apple Music. It's quite confusing. Can't figure out why when you specifically say play this particular thing, it just can't do it. And uh, that's why I'm so skeptical about the autonomous car. Oh, dude, <laughs> here is a golden comment from Zach Hicks. <laughs> Why did I not think about this? Of course, this is still not. This doesn't solve the problem. But he says you can use the side button to activate Siri. Durr! That's a great. That doesn't make for such amazing uh, radio, though. <laughs> no, it's not nearly as entertaining. And plus, when you're driving, you can't do that, right? So, I mean, if you have your phone up in, in a iPhone right. holder or something. So you really want to just use voice commands. And this is definitely a problem for those of us that have multiple Apple devices. If you're wearing the Apple Watch, you have an iPhone, and you're sitting in front of your HomePods, and let's hope that you don't have a Mac in the room, and then you say, hey, you know who. <laughs> like... They're, they should be able to tell which device you're talking to, but they often can't. It's really frustrating, and you end up just having to use your keyboard to dial it in or something because your freaking uh, devices can't figure out which one to uh, to pick. So anyway, you had, let yeah, me know if you've had this happen. Have you ever had, for instance, your wife making a request to Siri and your watch answers it? I, I haven't had that happen. That That, that is, is not supposed extra, to happen. That is extra annoying. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have a high voice, Lewis. Maybe that's why. <laughs> I think it's more that my wife has a low voice. Uh, husky uh, voice. That's yeah. right. That's why I keep telling myself. Uh, <laughs> Just don't tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not because uh, she's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I haven't had that happen, and that shouldn't happen because no, no, it, Siri it, it, should be able to tell who's speaking. Yeah. Well. You know? My favorite is when I'm speaking to you-know-who, and then it messes up, and then my kids try to help me, so they start speaking to you know who, and now we're all trying to talk to you know who at the same time, and I'm telling my kids to stop, and Siri is trying to talk to us, but I can't hear because now we're all just talking to each other, and finally I have to go into uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger kinder kindergarten cop mode and go shut up, <laughs> and then I and then I talk to it. All right, so very cool new features in iOS 14 new. 
14.5, you get the new Maps features, and then you could finally, finally set a default music service. You can either do it by just specifying which music service you want to be used when you're asking for a song, and that will set it automatically, and then going forward, it should always use that music service for any music request that you make, or it might ask you which music service you want to use, and then you can specify, and then from that point forward, you won't have to specify again. Well, you shouldn't need to specify again. Sometimes it still asks you to. Let's go ahead and wrap up with this story. Oh, this is my favorite one of the whole week. Tim Cook on the cover of Outside Magazine. Look at Tim Cook, the avid outdoorsman. Doesn't he look great? And you're thinking to yourself, wow, I didn't realize that Tim Cook was such a hardcore hiker. He's out there in the wilderness. And then wait, oh, wait a second. What's this? And that's uh that's the Apple Spaceship Campus right behind him, like a hundred <laughs> feet away. So what I thought was hilarious about this is they're 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 showing Tim Cook as like this avid outdoorsman, but doesn't Tim Cook do nothing but work? That's kind of what he's known for. He doesn't go anywhere ever. He's always working. Isn't that what you've heard, I, Leander? Yeah, he goes to national parks. He likes to hang out at national parks. There's been lots of you know reports about him hiking at Zion and. Um, you know, Utah and other places like that. So I think he's been out. I think he gets out every now and again. But, yeah, he does work a lot. Yeah, I thought he was just pretty much always working. I mean, the guy gets up at, like, 4 a.m. and and goes to the gym and then, and then comes to work. And I just thought this was hilarious. They're, like, trying to peg him as, like, some outdoor – uh, avid outdoorsman, but he's literally just in the grass outside uh, of Apple Spaceship <laughs> HQ. You know, he's like, let's just do it in the field, y'all, because I got to go back rugged. to work in it's, five minutes. You, know, you, you can get lost for weeks in the, uh, you know, in the in the trees around the Apple HQ, the, all the trees they planted <laughs> in the middle. I mean, you know, I can see you getting lost there. You are unbelievable. That is literally what Tim Cook said. He said, uh, working at Apple Park is like working in a national park with a design that brings the outsore outside in and the inside out. <laughs> You <laughs> literally just said what he said. You'd see people riding bikes from one meeting to another, said Cook, referring to the typical Apple Park workday prior to the pandemic. You would see people running. It's a two and a half mile track around the place. So put in a couple of laps and you've got a good workout for the day, y'all. A couple of laps? Around, yeah, it's two and a half that's miles. That's a 10K. Holy. That's five miles. Holy, yeah, well, that's what Tim Cook does, you know, at 3.30 a.m. when he's up. <laughs> right. Uh but one of the other things that he mentioned in this article, which I thought was really interesting, was, let's see here. He talked about, okay, yeah, he talked about Apple Health, and he said that he thought Apple's big, the biggest contribution to, to people would be its work in healthcare. Now, that's interesting, don't you think, Leander? Because to this point, Apple's biggest contribution has definitely not been in healthcare. So doesn't that kind of make you think they've got some major healthcare plans and major right. healthcare initiatives that they haven't a- they haven't announced yet? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, like transforming the Apple Watch into a full-on, you know, medical monitoring device, mm-hmm. health monitoring device. Yeah, I think that's definitely what they, you know, he's he's talking about the amazing stuff they have in the labs that he 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 teased at um, the blood glucose monitor being, you know, probably the one that's probably going to maybe come out this year. But yeah, I wonder what else they've got. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Me too. I mean, the glucose thing would be one of the biggest developments in technology. I mean, I mean, in the history of technology, that's how big it would be. If you were, if you were able to just have something that you could have on your wrist that would optically evaluate your glucose, that would be an enormous move forward in the world of healthcare. For those of you that don't know anyone that has diabetes, I mean, they have to prick their fingers like so many different times a day. I mean, just imagine having to. to have one of those finger pricks. We've all had them, right? When they take bloods, and you're doing that like six, eight times a day, and measuring your blood to 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 measure your your blood sugar levels. And then for some people, they have to get like a, a device implanted in their arm that has a needle in it that's constantly monitoring their their blood sugar. And to have something that would do it optically, so that you're not constantly having to prick yourself, would change people's lives enormously. It would probably help them prevent getting diabetes or being pre-diabetic. And then for those that do have diabetes, it would help them have a much higher quality of life without having to like constantly be pricking themselves and stuff. I mean, just you imagine. Know, it's like kids and adults constantly doing that. Yeah, go ahead. Well, what we really need is THC content. <laughs> well, yours would and be really like error, error. Well. 
Oh, the right? blood alcohol content. That would actually be really useful. Yeah. And Too it would save. Drive. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But Too you won't need drive. that once they have the Apple car. Because then you'll be able to just drink while you're being driven around, right? Like, that's really right, what Right, exactly. Want. Yeah, yeah. With impunity, yeah. But I wonder whether, you know, like if they're doing this stuff with, with blood sugar, why not, uh, you know, detect other chemicals in your blood? I don't know if it's possible, but it raises that, doesn't it? And also, like, I'm always really interested to hear about, you know, the, it detecting uh, Parkinson's symptoms mm -hmm. early. You know, you can tell from, from, from your movements whether there's the tremors there. Mm -hmm. And also COVID-19, you know, they were supposed to be, uh, they're looking into studying that, isn't it? Whether it can tell if you have, um, you have the disease before uh, symptoms even show. Study you know, just it's got published this week talking about that, saying that it actually does. It can, it can predict it like a week ahead of time. That's wasn't insane, that, isn't it? Wasn't that based on like your heart rhythm or something? Yeah, the heart rate. That is crazy. Imagine if they really did churn the Apple Watch into a legitimate health care device. Well, right now, they're just kind of playing around with it. Yeah, I think it's getting there. You know, it's definitely getting there. Yeah, uh, and, the and, oxygen and the sensor was kind of a big step forward, but they even say that you can't really rely on that to be something that... Well, it shouldn't be something that you rely on, right? It's more for like... Uh, just for informational purposes. Right. right. Well, that's that's what I keep wondering about with this uh, this glucose monitor. I mean, if if it's legitimately powerful and accurate, then it's awesome. But then, you know, that that whole like getting it getting it approved as a medical device is a big step, right? I mean, although Apple was saying a while back, like, oh, we've you know, like like with the ECG was the first thing that they got approved, right, as a medical device. Isn't that correct? <laughs> or it's got FDA approval or something like uh -huh. that. And uh, there, I remember at the time saying, well, you know, we've we've learned a lot from this. We've learned a lot about how you work with these agencies to get this approved. And so, I mean, there, it, it's, it's definitely a whole other level of, like, <laughs> reliability, right? I mean, blood sugar, you can't have a, oh, it's mostly accurate approach to your blood sugar right. if you're diabetic. Right, and, and that applies to a lot of areas that they're kind of entering into. This comment from Tom Walker, it kind of ties into all this. He says, Apple Healthcare better cover auto accidents from Siri driving you off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> ah! You take off your VR your glasses and you're, you're driving off the cliff. That's the thing. This, this technology, the self-driving technology, the healthcare technology, it can't be 90%, right? It has to be 100% accurate. And and I think that's one of the reasons why these these kinds of technologies haven't become ubiquitous yet is because they're good, but they're not. They have to be bulletproof, especially with the Apple driving stuff. If the car is taking you somewhere and it, and it crashes, right? Well, who is responsible for that? Is it you or is it Apple? I think it's Apple. Yeah. Well, I, I'd read the same thing. That uh, there's been a lot of debate about that about liability. You know, this is probably they're saying this is one of the biggest. Um, hurdles to uh, car makers uh, bringing out autonomous vehicles is because, you know, they will probably have to um, assume liability if anything goes wrong. And, you know, look at, you know, like someone like Toyota. I mean, that, that uh, they make in how many how many cars do they make a year? It's in the millions, isn't it? Tens oh, of I have no idea. Cars. Yeah, a lot. And, you know, like assuming liability for all of those vehicles is a big uh, headache. And so, uh, you know, it was something I think they're not, you know, companies don't really want to find out. <laughs> You know uh, who is who is liable. It's something that's going to be defined in law, I think, which I don't think has been done yet. Yeah, and the thing is too is it's a big pot to draw from. So lawyers are going to be attracted to that to oh, to, to, yeah. to, to, to those lawsuits because they you know may, yeah. Apple's propensity to pay is unlimited. Right? You could you could sue them for whatever you wanted. Whereas with a person, they have policy limits in place, and once you've exhausted those limits, well, you're not going to get anything probably other than that so it limits how much lawsuits can be for but if your apple car drives you off a cliff well shoot now you get to sue apple and we know tc's got the money to back it up so i wonder how they're going to deal with that clearly it wouldn't be your fault even if you signed so i heard someone say oh well they'll have you sign a waiver so that you accept liability for your car but how does that make sense you're not the one driving i guess well, it's right. your property it's causing damage to someone else's property yeah, like I said, I think it's going to be defined in law. They got the lawmakers got to figure out exactly where the liability lies. Yeah, I think it's going to lie with Apple ultimately because <laughs> I mean they're the ones deciding where, where the car goes, and we all know how that's going to end. At least for now, with Siri in charge, 
you're going to end up taking an exit you didn't anticipate right off the side of the overpass. Lewis, were you going to say something, Lewis? Yeah, I was just, you know, I mean, if, yeah, if it just can't, if it cannot play the song you request when you actually pronounce the song properly and, and, and even give the name of the musician, eh, a little bit nervous about handing the keys to the car. You know what? That's an outstanding point. I think we should go ahead and <laughs> wrap it up there because that point pretty much just says it all. <laughs> it says it all. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there. That's all the uh, cult cast we have for you guys <laughs> this week. But if you want to catch more, we're all on Twitter. I'm at Airfon, E R F O N. Lewis is at Lewis Wallace. Leander is at Al Kane. This has been the cult cast, the best 30 plus minute album conversation you're going to hear all week long. New episodes of the cult cast come out every Thursday night. I want to thank everyone for listening, and we'll see you guys next time. I feel like that was kind of abrupt. Was that abrupt, Lewis? I think you downshifted really quickly. Yeah, I did. We were having fun, having fun. It's like oh. it's like a drive in the Apple car. Everything's going great, and then all of a sudden you're flying in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Thelma and Louise style. <laughs> Somebody hold my hand. Here we go. All right, let me uh, let me crank down the music. Shout out to Sid stuff, Sai stuff. You missed it. The game is over. You missed the game, but you can watch the rebroadcast, and I recommend you do several times. All right, bye everyone. <laughs> where's the end stream? Dear Lord, where is it? Just can't find the button. I can never find the button. Have a nice day, guys.